This is my third time reviewing the C14 and talking about the C14 setups. So first time when I was using the C14, I was using the moonlight focuser and some kind of a filter slider, a ZWO camera. I was still using the 0.7x reducer, but that was my first time setup. A second time when I was reviewing the C14, I was using a off-axis guider and the rest of the setup is the same. I was still using the filter slider and the ZWO camera. Back of my mind, I wanted to change the setup. I wanted to change the setup almost permanently, right? One of the biggest things when you are using the long focal length telescopes, you will start realizing if you take a picture, you don't get a whole lot of stars in your image uh, because the magnification is so high, almost like a one third of a degree, like 0 0.3 of a degree. And by looking at the picture, you will actually see you didn't get something right. Uh, most of the time, maybe your collimation of your uh, secondary mirror is not correct or maybe your back focus is not correct and your gear is not good enough to use a big focal length telescopes. Even if you are using 8SE or 9 or 11, you still have a similar issues. I think those issues are going to get bigger when you get to 14. So one of the things I really wanted to do is see if I can go for a much better image train. That's like my dream. So since I had built this observatory, I was thinking to stabilize the usage of the C14 by giving it the right equipment so that I can uh, to get the best deal out of the C14. So the gear I'm showing you here, actually I'm myself, I'm fairly new for that gear. So I'll go over, uh, don't have a faint heart when I was talking about these things because uh, not only these are expensive, but they are also complicated. So the first equipment uh, right after the 0.7x reducer is a focuser. This is a very low profile focuser. It is called Optec, Optec Leo low profile focuser. So this one uh, can go like in 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 0 0.8 micron steps. So you can actually make tiny changes to your focus, which is what we need when we are dealing with C14. And then if you see the this side of it, you're seeing an off-axis guider, right? This off-axis guider gives you a much bigger prism. It is called Sagita. Sagita 2, like version 2, I believe. It's an off axis guider. And I put here a Lodestar X2 camera. It's fairly old from Starlight Express, but it is extremely good when you are taking uh, pictures like with C14. Uh, you want something with a high resolution so that even if you see like one or two stars uh, in that image for the off-axis scatter, you should still be able to use that for guiding. And then we are talking about a filter wheel from QHY. This is called QHY CF3 or CFW3. So this filter wheel is a seven slot filter wheel that has a 55 mm filters. You can, you can put actually seven filters inside and that 55 mm, the uh, round unmounted filters are really good if you are going to attach a full frame camera. Mainly if you are using this filter wheel, you probably are using a QHY uh, camera. In this case, I'm using QHY 367C Pro camera, which is a color camera and I'm just using a luminance filter. But if I take this out and if I put QHY 600, which is a monochrome camera, but a full frame, 
you could use all other narrowband filters or the LRGB, all of the filters as well. Uh, it's pretty easy to plug and play with this filter because uh, all you have to do is take these three screws and then basically uh, remove the color camera, put your monochrome camera right there. It makes it perfect and simple and easy. These are difficult to not only to buy because of the expense, but also to use. So I'll start going over as I put more and more videos, how I actually set this whole thing up, what is the exact back focus, and what are the adapters that I used. So in the last video, I told you guys that I'm using the Whenever I create a video, I always have this. Some flights will go. Don't understand why. Okay. All right. So in the last videos, I introduced that I'm using the Orion HDX 110 EQG, and I'm fairly impressed with this mount. Uh, for the price of this mount, for what it is, it gives you like at least 5 minutes, if not even 10 minutes exposures with a scope like C14. I'm really impressed. This is the same as the EQ8R Pro or EQ8 Pro. And these are the best mounts, I believe, for the C14 in that price range. Uh, the mounts that are uh, much higher ones like the Paramount or any other uh, bigger mounts, they are in the 10,000, 8,000, 15,000 price range and this mount is almost half of that price. So from a cost standpoint, you can save a lot of money and get what you need with the C14 with this mount. I'm, this is the best mount, even Celestron CGXL or CGX or any other mounts, I don't think anyone, any mounts can be compared to this mount. So I give you full thumbs up for the Orion HDX 110. I believe it's the same as the EQ8 mount as well, Skywatcher EQ8. Perfect mount, beautiful setup. Uh, it tracks fairly well for what I'm asking for. Uh, if there is one gear that I give a thumbs up so far uh, as after start using it, that would be this mount. Very cool. Uh, there are some limitations and gotchas to this mount. Uh, in terms of like, you know, it doesn't do the auto home as well as it is supposed to. Uh, there are things here and there that are still can be better, but for that price, I'm impressed. When I have time, I'll put a full review of this mount since I liked it so much. So that's the introduction for this new gear. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, let me know if you want me to go into details on any one of these gear. A lot more, I don't mind putting a video with this care and uh, detailed setup. Thanks for watching. It's pretty cloudy. So once I'm done with this video, I can close my observatory. Uh, closing, oops. Closing observatory is actually fairly simple. It, opening is the one that I need, like a ladder and all that stuff. Closing, I can do it like with one hand. That's it, it's closed. Hi, see you all again.